Okay, hello everyone. <coughs> Morning everyone. All right, thank you for being here on time. Uh, today we're going to continue. Um, we are going to finish test number three material. Um, the presentation that we are going to use today, it is posted on, uh, is posted on Blackboard, so you have it available. Uh, we are ready to start. Any question before we start? Okay. Okay, so yesterday we stopped here. Um, um, I made a mistake. I uh, didn't properly write, uh, write this correctly. Okay. So <clears throat> we are starting with logarithmic functions. Okay, logarithmic functions are the inverse function or the inverse operation of of exponential functions. Okay, um, the its notation is the following. Okay where a is the base, okay? And what the, uh, uh, what the function, the logarithmic function evaluates is the argument of the logarithmic function, okay? This is a one-to-one -one function and it has an inverse, which is an exponential function. In the left side, we have, we have a exponential expression where we are seeing 3 squared equals to 9 okay and we know that that's true because 3 times 3 is 9 okay so what is the inverse of this expression this exponential expression well the inverse of that exponential expression is before let me identify the base the base here, the base is three. The power or the exponent is two. And the result, okay, let's say the output here or the product or the result is nine, okay? In logarithmic functions, we have a base, a base goes here. So there you are seeing the base, base is three. And we read this log base three. The since we are working with the inverse of the exponential expression, in the exponential expression two is, is the input. If we are working with exponential functions, two it will be the input, and nine is the output. Well, for the inverse of three squared equals nine, the inverse operation which is log base 3 of 9 so here we have the argument the argument is 9 and then the output or the result is 2 okay so that is the connection between the exponential expression and the logarithmic function, or the exponential function and the logarithmic function. They are inverse to each other. And to what uh, a logarithmic function look for? What is the question that a logarithmic function make? The question is the following. Is I'm using log base three of nine equals two. Okay. 
And this says or ask for what power let me just see like the colors uh, purple green and blue what power of what for of the base Give the argument. Okay. So the last time uh, my mistake is what is that I interchange two and three. Okay. What power of the base give the argument? Okay. The the base here is three. So we can read this as what power of three give nine? So what power of three, what is the exponent that we need to put on three to get nine? Okay, so that is uh, no, two. So that is what we are doing with learning functions. We are asking for what is the power of the base that give us the uh, argument. So we could do log base two of four. What will be the answer? It is two because two raised to the power of two is four. 2 raised to the power of 2 is 4. Another question. Log base um, 3 give us Nine is not the answer. Let's let uh, for that is four. Okay, so always we need to th uh, uh, think um, in terms of the power of the base. Okay, so we have three, three s square is nine. 3 cubed is 27, okay? And 3 to the power of 4 is 81. So that's why we have um, 4 as the result. Okay? In general terms, in the document we have, in the second document that I post on the last class on Monday, we have the following log base a of x represent the blank to which a must be raised to result in x okay 
if we use um, the examples log base 3 and then x is going to be um, 81 represent the power to which 3 okay 3 is the base must be raised to result in 81 okay so that is 4 4 3 raised to the power of 4 81 okay so log base a of x is the power of who log base a of x is the power of who log base 3 of 81 is remember that this is equal to 4 is the power of 3 that give us 81 okay if we use this example the inverse of logarithmic function is an exponential function okay and what we are seeing here is the exponential expression and the logarithmic expression so these two equations are inverse to each other okay they are inverse functions so that's the concept by ha behind uh, the logarithmic function okay the logarithmic function um i think the most difficult thing for the logarithmic function is its notation its notation is a bit complicated it's different from what we are used to okay but every time we see a logarithmic function, we are asking backward an exponential function, okay? So this document here is going to help you because first you have an exercise with different powers. This is what we did as already, and this is a good table or a good, a good concept to, to follow or a good, uh, a good method to remember how to uh, write logarithmic functions into uh, its component based on the exponential expression. For example, we have log base 5 of 25 equals 2 because 5 raised to the power of 2 is 25. So its exponential form would be 5 squared equals 25. So the base, see the base on both. Okay, yeah, yeah, let me finish with that one and then I go back. The base for both forms, the logarithmic function and the exponential function, the base is the same, it's five, okay? The argument is going to be, when we are talking about argument, it's going to be what is the, uh, what the the concept or the expression that the logarithmic function is evaluating okay in this case it, the logarithmic function is evaluating the number 25 so that's the argument and the exponent is going to be the output of the logarithmic function or it's going to be the power in the exponential form so the exponent is 2 okay here we have the exponential form now we need to write this in uh, in log form in logarithmic function. Okay, so we start identifying the base. What is the base here? The base. In the uh, focus on this on the right side on the exponential form. Tell me what is the base of that? Yeah? It is 10. Okay, so the base is 10, so that means that 10 goes here. Perfect. Now, um, how would you place, where you will place three and a thousand in the logarithmic form? Where three goes and where a thousand goes? Yeah, 
So now we have three, which is the power, the exponent, and we have a thousand, which is the output of the exponential form. But now we need to use three and a thousand. Those goes here. But where they go? Where is the place, the correct place to put a thousand and three in the logarithmic form? form? Okay, always think of as a function, the input and the output. What is the input in the exponential form? It is three, okay? It's the exponent. And what is the output? Is the result that we got after applying the exponent. Logarithmic function is the inverse of, exponential function, of the exponential function. That means that the input and the output, they uh, get interchange. So, now the output in the exponential form becomes the input in the logarithmic function or in the logarithmic form. So a thousand goes here and then the output is going to be three. Okay? Because 10 raised to the power of three gives off a thousand. Okay? Then so the base is 10, the argument is 1,000, the, and the x one is 3. I'm giving you here the base, the argument, and the x one. And I want you to tell me, and I want you to tell me what is the log form and what is the exponential form. Take two minutes to do that.
Okay, and seeing here, Timothy, one log base, um, log base E, Benjamin as well, seeing you. Okay, Alex, Timothy, okay. Okay. Yeah, it looks about right. I'm happy with that. Okay. So we have the base. So we got the base, log base E. And in the exponential form, well, we know that that's going to be the, uh, the base. So what we are looking for is the exponent and the uh, output here. And here we are looking for the argument and the output. Okay. The argument is one over E. So that goes here. And the argument in the exponential form is the output. And then it is the exponent, the exponent here, the output in the logarithmic function is going to be the exponent in the exponential form. Okay. Your then uh, E is the base, the output in the logarithmic form is negative one. Timothy, that's correct. Let me see, Alex. Okay, Alex, you put three things. The second equation that you put there is incorrect. Timothy, you got it right there. Mm -hmm. The logarithmic form is right. The exponent, the exponent Alex is e raised to the power of negative one. And Benjamin, you got it right. Okay. All right. Now. Let's continue because what we are going to do is our goal is going to be our goal is going to be to solve logarithmic functions as well as exponential functions. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. I'm sorry, Jordan. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Jordan. You tell me where it was here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now let's do exercises to know how we are going to apply these properties. Okay. We did something very similar before. Okay. Uh, what we are going to do is to relate the logarithmic, logarithmic readings with the exponent. So what we are going to do here, we have a logarithmic expression and we want to change it into an exponential expression. Again, we start with the base. The base is three. Okay. The output of the logarithmic function is the exponent, and then the argument is going to be the output. Okay, here we are using y and an x, but below it we have a more concrete example. So three equals right raised to the power of four. This is equal to eighty-one, and you can see that we are following the same structure. Y or the output in a is y in a point one is four so that is the x one the base is three so we have the x one that we apply to three and then equals to the argument in the the argument of the logarithmic fun function which is 81 or x in a okay again here phi raised to the power of y equal x Phi raised to the power of negative one equals one over five. Okay, and this makes sense with the laws of exponents.
this is more exercises, the same concept, okay? A is the base, raised to the power of five equals four. Here, we are not solving for the variables, okay? Here, we are not solving for the variables, or we are doing just changing the logarithmic expression into an exponential expression. E raised to the power of negative three equals B, and so on. Three raised to the power of C equals five. Okay, this is important because this is what we are going to use okay, to solve um, the logarithmic equations. You need to be able to change the logarithmic expression to an exponential expression. Okay. The other the other way is is something that we want to know as well because in order to solve exponential equations with different bases, we are going to use the logarithms. We are going to use the inverse operations. So, for example, here we have this exponential form. The first thing that we want to identify is the base. The base is three, so that is going to be log base three. Okay, its power, which is two, is going to be the output of the learning uh, function and the number that result after applying the power of two to three, which is nine, is going to be the argument of the learning of the logarithmic uh, function. Okay, let's try number four. The base is a, the argument is 2.1, and the power or the output of the random function is 3. Okay? Doesn't matter if we have a value, a decimal, a whole number, a fraction, okay? As long as we follow these uh, exercises, we are going to do uh, well when ch changing from exponential form. To logarithmic form, uh, logarithmic form and vice versa. Okay? Any question? Okay? And here is more of the exercises where we want to change from the logarithmic form to the exponential form, identify the base, identify the exponent and take the argument, and that's going to be the uh, output of the exponential form, okay? With the logarithmic functions, there are two special notations. We have the common logarithm, which is base 10, and usually the base 10, the number 10 is, is omitted, so every time you see just log, it means that the base is 10, okay? If we are using base e, we are going to call that logarithm, logarithmic function the natural log, the natural logarithmic function and we are going to write as ln. So log base e, it is replaced with ln, okay? So those are two special notations for logarithmic functions. Base 10, just, you just write log, or ln means log base e. e, it is a special value in math as well for as well as uh, uh, the value of pi so e is other number that is important in math so, say one more time oh okay Okay. Okay. So the remember that they are inverse to each other. The exponential function and the logarithmic function they are inverse to each other. They are inverse operations. Okay. So when we are working with in the inverse, uh, 
if we have a coordinate x comma y when we do the inverse of that coordinate we are going to have y comma x okay so the input and the output are interchanged so that effect causes that the domain of the function will become the range of its inverse okay and the range of the function will become the domain of its inverse okay and we need to remember that the range of the exponential function goes from zero to positive infinity so now when we are working with the inverse the logarithmic function now if the domain of the logarithmic function goes from zero without including zero to positive infinity so all positive numbers that gives a restriction this is important because now the domain of the logarithmic function is going to be uh, restricted by just positive numbers so that means that the logarithmic functions only is going to evaluate positive values, positive arguments, okay? So that means that we are going to need to find the domain of, or we, need, we will need to de determine the domain of the logarithmic function, okay? And you will see how that restriction applies to the exercise that we are going to be working with, okay? find the domain of the logarithmic function. So in the argument here, what we have? We have a mathematical expression. We have 3x. That is the argument. So that argument doesn't have right now a, a specific value because we have a variable, and that variable has an unknown value. So how are we are going to find the domain of the logarithmic function? Well, we know by definition that the logarithmic function only will evaluate positive values so we are going to use this we are going to take the argument and we are going to put the argument needs to be greater than zero so we need to use this inequality we solve for this inequality and we find the domain of this particular uh, logarithm expression the domain of this function is from negative three without including it to positive. That's the domain. We have the argument here for b. We have log base 5 of 1 plus x divided by, by 1 minus x. So we know that the argument or the logarithmic function here is going to evaluate only positive values. So we are going to take the argument. And we are going to say this needs to be greater than zero. Um, since we haven't worked with inequalities in this form, I know I'm going to ask you uh, to solve for this inequality, okay? We need to do uh, other things here to solve for this inequality. This is just an example. Uh, doesn't matter what is the argument, the argument always needs to be greater than zero. Okay? In the assessment, you will not see an argument in this form because we haven't worked with uh, inequality of rational functions. So we can use what we know about the exponential functions to translate them into the logarithmic functions because they are inverse to each other, so the properties are going to be inverse as well. Example, in the exponential form, we don't have x-intercepts. We only, we only have one y-intercept, and that is going to be at 0, 1, or to the, value of the, the, to the value of c, the value of the constant. In this expression, the value of c is 1. So that is why the only intercept for this expression is at 0, 1. So look how this changed. 
Then in the inverse, when we are working with the inverse with the logarithmic function, there is not going to be y intercept, but the only x intercept is going to be at what what coordinate? Well, one comma zero. We interchange the coordinates. Now we have one comma zero as the intercept, and that intercept is on the x axis. It's an x intercept. Okay. The horizontal asymptote now becomes a vertical asymptote. And the key points, remember we have 0, 1, 1, 1, a, 1, 1 over a. Well, the key point of the learning function are going to be these same key points, but with the coordinate interchange. Now it's going to be 1, 0, a, 1, 1 over a, negative 1. Okay, so using the properties of the exponential uh, functions, we can know the property of the logarithmic functions because they are inverse to each other. The only thing that we need to do is the change is to in, in, interchange the coordinates. It needs to interchange the range and the domain. It's, it's going to be, we need to do the mental exercise of working with the logarithmic function as a exponential function, but in the inverse way. Here we have an image of how they look. Uh, we have this exponential function to raise to the power of x, and the inverse is going to be log base 2 of x. Okay, so we have the inverse and we have the exponential function here. So in the exponential function, we remember that we have a horizontal asymptote that prevent this curve here to go below it. Well, what happened with the horizontal asymptote when we are working with the inverse? It becomes a vertical asymptote and you will see that this blue curve never go to the left side of this vertical asymptote. Okay, so the, the concept or the component of the function stay there. The only thing that changes is that they now they are inverse. Okay. The only y intercept in the exponential function is 0, 1. Okay. But now that y intercept becomes an x intercept with 1, 0 in the inverse function. Okay. So the domain of the logarithmic function goes from zero to positive infinity. The domain of the exponential function is all real numbers. The range of the exponential function goes from zero to infinity. The domain of uh, the range of the logarithmic function is all real numbers. Okay, and you can see that by looking at the graph. Okay, this is the exponential form or the exponential function, and this. This here is the logarithmic function. Yeah, they are going to reflect to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, Benjamin, that is one of the effect graphically or visually of the a function and in inverse. If we put the function and it inverse in the Cartesian plane, we are going to see a reflection. Okay, um, so let me see what numbers we have here. Okay, so the, I'm going to ask you to find the domain, the range, the asymptote, and the inverse also give me the key points of C. Okay, let's take a few minutes 
to find the domain, the range, the asymptote, its inverse, and its key points. Okay? Keep in mind that there is a transformation here. You will find domain, range, asymptote, uh, inverse, in this case, in this case, f of f inverse is referring to the exponential form. And then what else? Ah, keep this. Okay, take five minutes and post your answer on the chat. Mohammed, you're good.
All right. Okay. And see your answers. I think. In general, in general, they are good. Okay. All right. So domain. Let's start with the restriction that all logarithmic functions have is that they only evaluate positive values. So our argument needs to be greater than zero. And we are going to use the restriction to find the domain. We take the argument x plus four need to be greater than zero. We solve for x and we find that x needs to be greater than zero. We translate this into a interval notation. Okay. The range for all, this is part of the properties. The range of all logarithmic function is always going to be all the real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Doesn't matter what function we have here, as long as it's a logarithmic function, the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. The asymptote. How are we going to find the asymptote? Well, there are many ways to find the asymptote of our logarithmic function. One of those is to remember that in the exponential form, the asymptote is a horizontal asymptote, so it, it, is, a, it is y equals zero, right? When we are doing the inverse, then we have a vertical asymptote. When we are working with the logarithmic function, we have a vertical asymptote. And now the equation of that vertical asymptote is x equals zero. But that is on the parent logarithmic function, okay? In the parent logarithmic function, we have x equals zero as being the vertical asymptote. Now, what is the meaning of this plus four in the argument in terms of transformations? What type of transformation are we are seeing here? Mohammed, that would be if plus four would be would have been in the output group. But in terms of the logarithmic function, anything inside the argument is the input group. So we are adding four in the input groups. What is the effect? What is the effect? Uh, you are correct, Benjamin, because you are saying in the you are talking about the in horizontal terms, but that is the incorrect direction. It is left four units, okay? So we move for, uh, to the left four units, okay? So that means that all x coordinates, okay? This plus four means left four units, means that all x coordinates minus four. Okay, all the x coordinates we are going to subtract minus 4. And that also applies to the asymptote. So the asymptote is, the vertical asymptote here is, is the equation of the vertical asymptote is x equal minus 4. Okay? And that makes sense with the domain. Look where the domain starts at negative 4 without including it because at negative 4 we have the vertical asymptote I see the inverse here the inverse will be this one is interesting remember how the step to write the inverse So let me put here the function. What are the steps of writing an inverse of a one-to-one -one function? Step number one is to replace y with, uh, is to replace f of x with y Okay, 
Then in that same step, we are going to interchange X and Y. And then we are going to, step number two is we are going to solve for y and here to solve for y what we are going to do is to change this logarithm expression into into what into an exponential form so we get rid of the um, of the logarithm function by using the exponential form. So solving for y, we subtract both sides by minus 4, this get cancelled, and in the end we got y equals 2 raised to the power of x minus 4. Step number three is that we replace y with f inverse of x and that is the inverse of the logarithmic function. Any question with this? Okay. The key points we need Okay. Jacqueline those that you're, I think they are correct for the parent logarithm function. You are not applying the, the transformation, but we are going to do that here. Okay, let's, let's focus on the key point for the parent function. The parent function will be here, log base two of x, all right? So we are working with log base two of x plus four, so its parent function will be log base log base two of x. That's it. And we have three key points. Okay. We have there and again there's many ways to find or to remember the key points. One of those uh, methods is to remember to think in exponential form but in, in the inverse way. So we know that we need to have negative one, zero, and one. If we are thinking in exponential form, negative one comma one over a, uh, zero comma one, and then one comma eight, okay? If we translate that into the inverse, so all the x coordinate now becomes the y coordinates, okay? And here, when the y value, or the y coordinate is negative one, we got one over two, one over the base. We got one here, and here we have two. But we are working with f of x equal log base 2 of x plus 4. And that plus 4 means that we are going to subtract all the x coordinate by 4. So 1 half minus 4 comma negative 1. 1 minus 4 comma 0. And 2 minus 4 comma 1. And those are the key points. What we need to do is to uh, finish to simplify the simplification here because we have 2 minus 4, that is minus 2, 
Okay, I'm going to erase this and we're going to put minus 2. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And help me with this one. A half minus 4. Negative 7 over 2, correct. And those are the key points. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we have more exercises here. Okay, I'm going to give leave this in blank so you can practice them and if you have questions, you can uh, make questions about them. Remember that LN, the base, is E. Okay. And remember the effect of having a factor or a multiplication in the output group. Okay, there's a transformation there. Okay, so now how are we going to solve logarithmic equations? The way that we are going to solve logarithmic equations is first, we need to identify if we have a logarithmic equation or not. If the variable that we are going to solve for is in the argument, then it is a logarithmic equation and we need to use the properties of the logarithmic functions. Okay, in this case, we are going to use the property that we Already that we know. The only one that we know is to transform the logarithmic expression into an exponential expression. Okay? So that's what we are going to do here. Uh, the way we can free the variable that is confined in the argument of the logarithmic function is by using the inverse expression, which is the exponential expression. So the base is 3. The power is 2, and the argument is 4x minus 7. This becomes something that we already know how to work with, because this is 9 equal 4x minus 7. This, be, this is now a linear equation. So we have here 2. Uh, 7 is 15, seven, 9 plus 7 is 16. It's 16, we divide both sides, and we got x equals 4. Easy, right? Any question with this? Give me the answer for B. What is the value for X? How can we get the value of X, which is in the base now? Okay, this is another logarithmic equation. And how, why it is a logarithmic equation? In this case, X is not in the argument, but X is in the base of that logarithmic function. Okay, so we need to find, figure out what is the base of that logarithmic function. How can we get that value? Okay, Benjamin, I see eight. Anyone else? Any other value that might come up here? Okay, so what we are going to do is to use the base to the power of 2 equals 64. We do the square root on both sides, right? And that gives us plus minus square root of 64, which is plus minus the square root of 8. Are 
Uh, Mohammed, can you Mohammed, and can you mute yourself? Yeah, no way. Okay, okay. But you are telling me that it's just positive eight. But the when we apply the square root on an equation, we got the plus and minus. So. Correct. Why it doesn't work? Why it doesn't work? The base. Correct. Okay. This is very. This is related to what we did on last class when we were exploring why the base on exponential equation cannot can't be um, negative okay yeah it could give you value but look what happened it, we have a continuous function here right when a the value of the base is positive okay when it becomes Negative now it is not a continuous it is not continuous also it is not a function because if we that's a great question what does those dot represent first the first thing that we need to see is that we if we do a vertical line test this is going to fail I don't know how if you can see this yeah okay the first thing is that we no longer have a function because it doesn't work with uh, it doesn't pass the vertical line test for uh each x value we are getting two y values so that doesn't work with the definition of the function but this god okay i'm not going to, I, again i'm not going to focus on the background of this if you have questions about this and you are curious we can talk about this after class, okay? Because this is beyond our our course, and I don't want to uh, make things more complicated, okay? But this is very related. This this um, mm -hmm, yeah, it, 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 we get we are starting getting complex numbers, okay? Not only real numbers, right? we are out, outside of the real uh, realm of numbers, okay? So this is very related to this because remember that um, that uh, the logarithmic function is the inverse of is inverse function of the exponential function, and the exponential function has a restriction. The base in the exponential function cannot be negative, so that translates into a logarithmic function. We cannot have base that are negative. So this is algebraically is correct, but when we apply to the logarithmic function, the only possible solution is x equal eight. Okay. Again, we have other exercises. Um, now, so we did logarithmic equations. Let's do exponential equation. In the previous class, we did we solve exponential equations, but those exponential equations um, had uh, similar bases on both sides. So when we have similar bases on both sides, we can just take the exponent and say they are equal and then solve for the exponent, right? But here we don't have similar bases because here we have e and we have phi. They don't have a base in common. There's no power between them that is in common. Okay, so how are we going to solve this using the inverse operation? Let's translate this into a logarithmic form. I'm going to use ln because the base is e. Okay. The result or the output of the exponential function is phi. So that becomes the argument of the logarithmic function, which is natural log. Then the power that we have here becomes the output 
of the of the function, the learning function. And remember when I said that um, I the logarithmic function it is used to represent values. Right now, what we are seeing here on the left side is a number, is a value. The thing is that we use ln natural log of five to write that value. Okay, but this is another way to write the values. It's like a fraction. Five over one is five. So we have multiple ways to write the value of five. Here we are using the logarithmic function, natural, uh, the natural logarithmic function to write that particular value. What value it is? I don't know yet. We can do the calculator. We can use the calculator. Five and natural log. Where are you, natural log? It is here. So that is that value. Usually we use natural log to write values this way. Most of them could be irrational values. So there is no proper way to write a decimal representation of that value because irrational numbers have an infinite number of decimals. So there is no proper way to write the entire value when we are working with irrational numbers. So what we do? Well, we use other expressions. We use natural log. The natural log of five is just a value. So we treat it as a value. So that means that for solve for x, we divide both sides and our solution becomes the following. x equals natural log of five, all this divided by two, and that is the solution. And that's a value. That's a number. The only thing is that is, it is the representation of that value of that number is based on the natural log of five. Okay. Let's do this the other one I have here. Log base four of 71 equals X. That's it. We solve the, the problem. Because what we have here on the left side is again a value. That is the value of x. We can go, uh, no, calculator usually all the, not all the calculator have the function to write different bases for the logarithmic function. Okay, so again, we leave it like this. That is the solution. Log base 4 of 71 is equal to x. That is the value. Yes, Mohammed, we are going to use ln for e only. When we have the base equal to e, ln, yes. Okay, uh, give me the answer for b. Okay, you have three minutes. Let me know.
So this, this one is tricky, okay? Uh, it is tricky because we have a factor in front of the exponential exponential um, expression, okay? So we have a value for c that is different than one. So what we want to do in these cases, what we want to do is to leave alone or isolate the entire exponential form. So let's focus on the exponential form here, which is 3x, right? So 3x is being multiplied by 8. So we can move 8 to the other side. We can divide both sides by 8. We can set here, and then we've got 3x equals 5 over 8. Okay, perfect. And then the only thing that we need to do is to use the logarithmic function expression. So log base 3 of 5 over 8 equals x, and that is the value of x. Okay, again, this is a number, that's a value. The only thing is that we write that number in different form, in a different context, or different notation. Okay, so we got the value. So log base 3, perfect Jordan, that's correct. Log Uh -huh. So Alex, you, you got to this point, once you got to this point, turns that into a logarithmic expression and you got the value for x. Okay. So we focus on equations, equations. So far we have focused on equations of exponential equations with the same base. When we have the same base, we can use the property that says that the x and then need to be equal. And then we can eliminate the bases and get the, the exponent, the both power, both exponent parts, and just have an equation there. Usually what we are going to get is a linear equation. In our class, we are, once we finish with the exponential part or the logarithmic part, we are going to get a um, linear equation in most of the cases, you could see a quadratic equation, uh, but I'm going to focus more on on the on the technique of using the properties of e exponential and logarithmic functions. The other type of e equation that we have seen is the logarithmic equation, where we use uh, where the the variable is in the argument or the base of the logarithmic expression, and then what we do is to turn that expression into exponential, exponential um, expression to then to solve for x. Okay. The other type of equation that we are that we have seen is when we have an exponential equation, but with different bases. Okay. If we have different bases, then we need to use the logarithmic properties. We need to turn everything into a logarithmic form, and that will give off the value for the variable, okay? So those are the three types of equations that we have seen so far. Now, we are going to see other type of logarithmic equations in which we have multiple logarithmic functions in one equation. And in multiple logarithmic equations, what we are going to do when we have multiple logarithmic functions in one equation, what we're going to do is to use this property that we have here, okay? So we have five, six properties here that are important. This first one is the same as a raised to the power of x equals a to the power of y, means that x and y are the same, okay? These two properties are equivalent. The only thing that we are seeing here is that we have the logarithmic form and the exponential form. See that the bases are the same, both bases are the same. Here, if you focus on this, if the bases are the same and these two logarithmic functions are equal, it means that the arguments are equal, okay? This is related to the initial value. Remember that a raised to the power of zero is one. Well, any uh, logarithmic function that evaluates one will give us zero. Okay, so that's another important property. The third one, we have a log base a of a, basically they cancel each other and we got one. 
Why? Because any number raised to the power of one, it just itself. Okay, and that is what this uh, expression is saying here. This property is saying here. Okay. The other three properties are the one that we are going to use mostly to simplify equations with multiple logarithmic functions. Okay. We have the power or the exponent property of the logarithmic function. And that is when the argument has a, an exponent. If the argument has an exponent, what we could do is to use the exponent as a factor and multiply the logarithmic function by that factor, okay? And, and there's a modification in the logarithmic function because now the argument is no longer to have that uh, exponent there. Let's see an example. Um, we know that log base 2 of 8, what is this? What is the value of that? Log base 2 of 8. Log base 2 of 8. What power of 2 gives us 8? is 3, okay? So we know that this is equal to 3, right? What I'm going to do is to change places. So 3 is going to be here. So we know that log base 2 of 8 is 3. But 8 is also 2. I can replace 8 with 2 to the power of 3. I can, I can do that because it's the same value. The only thing is that I'm writing it differently. Okay. And based on this property, it says that, well, is, is the argument has an exponent, you can bring it down as a factor. Now your argument no longer has that exponent. Okay is now become a factor. And this log base 2 of 2, what is the value of that? It's just 1, because basically here, if we have the argument and the base that are equal, we cancel this expression because it's just 1. And that gives us 3. Okay? Well, 3 is equal to 3. This, this property is one that we take any exponent of the argument and we, we use it as a factor of the logarithmic function with the argument modified because it no longer will have an exponent. But we could do it by versa the, in the other way. If we have a multiplication of a number times a logarithmic function, we can use that number as exponent of the argument. Okay? Another important property is the product property for example, log base 3, let's say, log base 10, so just log of 12. 12 is the same as 3 times 4. If we have f two factors in the argument, we can separate them by the following property. But this property can be used in the other way as well. If we have an addition of two logarithmic functions with the same base, we can put we can put it together as just one logarithmic function, taking both arguments and multiplying them. The last one that we have here, log base of let's say five over three. This is the same as log of five minus log of three. Okay, and again, usually we want to use from a subtraction to a division in the, in the argument to simplify multiple, uh, an equation with multiple logarithmic functions. Okay, so let's go here and let's use those properties. All right, so we need to solve this logarithmic function. 
this logarithmic equation. We have two logarithmic functions. Both have the same base. That means that we could use, we can use the properties that we just saw, okay? Um, so how are we going to use those properties? Well, I want to combine then these two logarithmic functions into just one logarithmic function so I can solve for x, okay? So that is our goal here first, combine the logarithmic function with the same basis. So I can, remember this is just a value, so that means that I can subtract both sides by log base five of nine, okay? I'm going to do that as well here. So this get canceled, so we got two log base five of x minus log base five of nine, okay? Let me use parentheses for the arguments, equals zero. Still, this is not good for solving for x because I have two logarithmic functions and I want to combine them. And I know they are being subtracted to each other. There is a property that tells me, well, you can combine two log logarithmic functions that are being subtracted, okay, using this property, the quotient property, where we have, where we take the arguments, the positive logarithmic function, the argument of the positive logarithmic function, or the, log uh, the positive term, goes as, uh, becomes the numerator of the argument and the term of the logarithmic function with the negative sign, the argument of that logarithmic function becomes the denominator of the argument of the, uh, the logarithmic function, the logarithmic function that we are putting together based on these two. The detail here is that the x logarithmic function is based on nothing here in from being multiplied. There is nothing. What it is there, it's just the value of one, one times something, it's just that, but that's something. So we cannot exactly use this property yet because here we have a two. And that two is preventing us to use that property. But we have another property that deals with the any number that is being multiplied by the random function. And that is the power property that we have here. So it says that we can take that factor that number that has been multiplied by the logarithmic function, and we can use it as the exponent of our argument. And that's what we are going to do here. Because once we do this, log base five of x squared, now I can, now I can combine these two logarithmic functions because I have the same base and they are subtracted. They are being subtracted to each other. This is equal to zero. Okay. Now that I got to just one logarithmic function in my equation, now I can turn this into what? Into exponential form because I want to solve for x and x is in the argument. So it's going to be five raised to the power of zero equals x squared minus nine. But five raised to the power of zero is just one. I multiply both sides by nine, I got that nine is equal x squared. I solve for x using the square root and I got plus i minus three. So I have two values here for x. Bo are both the, the solution of this equation? We need to remember that my argument always needs to be positive and I have x. So 
x is in the argument, so x needs to be always positive, greater than zero. So for, out of these two possible solutions, the only real solution that we have here is x equals three. Okay. Let's try another. Any questions so far? Okay. So we have two, in this equation, we have two logarithmic functions with the same base. We are seeing that they are being added together. So what we are going to do is to use the following property where we are going to combine both arguments with multiplication, okay? And that will become the argument of just the logarithmic function log base five, okay? So from two terms, now we have one term and this is equal to one, okay? I won't expand this yet, okay? I'm going to take it as it is, okay? And I'm going to translate this into into an exponential form. So I'm going to get here, five raised to the power of one equals x plus six, x plus two, okay? And this is the case where you are going to be working with that quadratic equation. So this is five equal, when we expand this, we got x squared plus eight x plus 12. And this is very similar to something, you will see that this is something similar to test number two, when we were working, looking for the zeros, okay? So to solve this equation, we cancel both sides, so we got zero x squared plus eight plus seven, plus eight x plus seven, okay? So now this equation here is asking what are the values of x that makes this entire equation equal to zero? So we are looking for the zero of this polynomial here. And this polynomial is degree of two, that has a degree of two. So we have two methods to do here. We have the FOIL method, or we have the quadratic formula method, okay? I'm going to use the FOIL method. So my FOIL, the FOIL method will be x plus one, x plus seven. So when we multiply one and seven, we got seven. When we add them, we got eight. Remember that we are solving for that polynomial being equal to zero. So we have two options. X is equal negative one or X is equal negative seven. These are not the final solution yet. Why? Because we need to make sure that whenever we plug in that into our equation, we are not outside of the domain of my of the two logarithmic functions, okay? So if we plug in negative one here, we are good with negative one because negative one plus six is uh, positive five, so it's a, a positive value. If we plug in negative one in the second logarithmic function as well, we are going to be good as well because we are going to have a positive value in the argument. Negative one plus two is going to be positive one. Now, what happens when we plug in negative seven here? Negative seven plus six gives us a negative value in the argument, so that is not good for a logarithmic function because it's outside the domain of the logarithmic function. So negative seven, even though it's a zero of the polynomial that we got here, x squared plus eight x plus seven, it is not a solution for our initial uh, equation, which is a logarithmic equation, okay? So the only solution here is negative one. 
This is important. If you put both value for x, both zeros, negative one, negative seven, you are going to lose points because you need to be precise. You need to remember that we are working with logarithmic functions. I'm gonna do one more exercise and then you have more exercises to do and we still have uh, time before 11.50. So if you have questions, you want to practice, if you want to do one specific, that's the time to do it, okay? Okay. All right, so we have now three logarithmic function with the same base. They are not natural log base, uh, natural log fun uh, natural log functions. So we need to combine, the first thing that here is that we need to combine those three into one. So I'm going to start with the left side and seeing uh, they are being added together. So I have log, natural log of x times x minus four equals natural log of x plus six. This is natural log of x squared minus four equals natural log x plus six. We can subtract both sides by the right side here. So we have ln x squared minus four x minus ln x plus six equals zero. This is equal, we have a subtraction. So x squared minus four x over x plus six equals zero. We change this into an exponential form. E raised to the zero equals x squared minus four x all these x plus six. Any number raised to the power of zero is just one. We can solve this by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So we got x plus six equals x squared minus four x. So all the x's go to one side even also all the terms that are not zero go to one side. We are going to have zero on the other side. So it's, this is minus X minus six minus X uh, minus six. So we got, we can set here. So we got zero, all this equal to X squared minus five X minus six. Again, we are dealing with the zero of the quadratic equation. And we have two methods. We have the FOIL method and we have the quality formula method. Okay. I think I could I can use the FOIL method here. Let me see. X X um plus one minus six. That gives me uh, when we add them minus five when we multiply uh, minus six. So we are good there. That means that we have two possible solutions. The zero of the quadratic equation are negative one and x equals six. Those are the zeros, okay? But are there solution for the original equation, which is this one that we have here? Let's see. If we plug in negative one, we cannot plug in negative one in this first term. So negative one is not a solution of our system. Let's see with uh, positive six. Positive six goes here, we are good. Positive six goes here, we are still good because we have six minus four, that's two, a positive value, and six plus six is 12. So x equals six is our solution, the solution of the Rina equation, okay? Careful, if, we are, if you are working with a quadratic equation and solving for the zeros, those zeros are not necessarily the solution of the logarithmic function, okay? You need to test those possible solutions.
Okay, we have more exercises where you need to combine the logarithmic functions into one and then use uh, exponential form to solve for the logarithmic for the variable there. And Benjamin, you need to be more precise. Um, I, th I think to be safe, Benjamin, I would like to see the exponential form because that will tell me that you are basing, your answer is based of that, the knowledge that you have, the logarithmic function and the exponential form and the exponential function are inverse to each other, okay? It will depend on, on how you present your work. But usually, try to put the exponential form because that is a, a crucial step on solving logarithmic functions, logarithmic equations. Any other questions? No, no, that won't work. You want to combine all the logarithmic functions into one and then put it in as a expression form. What you wrote there um, in terms of the class or, or what we are presenting doesn't make sense. I don't know how you got to x raised to the power of 2 minus 4. Uh, this one? Uh, no, those are uh, issue one, two. Those are more exercises to practice what I just uh, showed on, on the class. Okay. Uh, these are additional practice exercises on top of the practice test that you will see on, you will get on Monday on top of the review. Okay. These are more exercises that will help you. Jacqueline, give me a moment. We, talk, we are we are going to talk about that. Um, okay, so in turn of the class, we have finished. Okay, and now I'm going to work on your questions. Uh, so um, I send you the feedback of all the drafts via email. I send you the draft, your draft, your draft with my annotations. I also wrote you on which area I want to see improvement. And I'll also include you the rubric. All of you that submitted the draft on time, you got all the points for the for the draft submission. Okay, but I'm using the rubric to give you an idea of how much point you will get if is that would be your final project. Okay, or your final your final work. Okay. So please review your email email and look for my message with. Uh, you should have attached to that message, to that email, you, you, the rubric and your draft with my annotations. Okay. If you have questions about what I want um, about my feedback, please, please send me an email. To try to meet with me, so we can um, agree on what I want to see in improvement I, uh, or, or what I want to see you to improve for your next draft and your final project, okay? All right, um, so let me stop here. I'm gonna start in open.